Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Laurie Tchaikovsky, and I'm going to be speaking about is the UK government backing free software? So, um, historically, in the past, no, they've not. Um, while they have said that they do have policies in place um, to provide and back open source, they actually have never implemented it. Um, but this is going to change. There we go. So the, for the previous 13 years, you've had the Labour government in power um, where they want to perceive, be perceived as pro-business. And pro-business meant that they were majority uh, large multinationals. Um, and large multinationals meant that they were a vendor locked in and usually not very friendly and open to open source. Um, there were policies in place. Um, but with that, what that meant was there was not actually anybody willing to actually implement them. Um, at the low scale, I'll go back one there. Um, at the low end, like the civil servants, um, where they were responsible for buying um, the open, for the products, the system integrators were all majority um, not very open source friendly. Um, so the, we do actually have the open source policies in place, but they haven't been implemented. Um, and that was basically due to prior, the prior governments. Um, we do hope that actually does change. So with a new coalition in place, um, they have been looking at open source alternatives. And um, this is at all levels, including senior level. There is a senior um, minister in place who deals with actually open source, and that their sole job and role is to look at open source in government, where they've set up think tanks to actually provide open source solutions. Um, uh, yeah. So how has that actually changed? Well, they've actually started to get com commitment from political level. So the, the politicians in power at the moment actually want to see open source in play. They're looking at other alternatives. They don't want to look at just the same old ding dong. Um, they want to actually change the rules. And how they're going to do about that is actually um, talk to open source developers here in the UK. They're going to actually ask for help. And they are doing that at present. So while the change is going to happen is that on the 11th of February this year, there's actually events that are going to take place in the UK to make this happen. There's a small to medium enterprise summit taking place with Francis Maud at the Treasury where members of uh, open source agencies in the UK and people who are very well respected in the UK are coming and taking part in those discussions. Um, and hopefully they'll be able to persuade the government that they actually should be looking at open source alternatives rather than just the usual um, system integrators. So they are looking at changing. Um, again, in February, um, these have just been released, is that the, um, there is a summit taking place on the 21st, um, which is basically going to have members of open source advocacy groups, including my company and other companies, taking part in the event, and they will be talking with procurement people and explaining that they need to look at all their alternatives. Um, and the areas they're going to look at, obviously, is there. they're looking at strategies, how they can actually change things, how they're going to actually make a difference. But it is actually happening at a place in the UK, we're very fortunate. Um, already Cardiff Council are looking at taking on workshops where they want to set up their entire infrastructure using open source technologies. The Ministry of Defence um, has just taken on a workshop and is looking at trying uh, other solutions and the Met for, your, for the weather. They're also looking at changing. So there are change, they are looking at alternatives. It is going to happen very, very slowly though. But um, one of the leading um, councils in the UK, Bristol Council, which is one of the largest ones there, has just rolled out um, their entire infrastructure will be using open source technologies. And that is one of the largest ones in the UK to roll this out. Um, which is pretty good to see that it's finally happening. And it is going to be slowly happening. But at least it is happening. So that's really it. Thank you. Okay, so the question was, as individuals, how can we actually help this happen? Well, talking to your politicians, talking to your local governments, or if you have any contacts with the small to medium businesses, um, talking to them and explaining that there are other alternatives and other solutions, or if you know of consultants that are in the areas, then talking to them as well. Great, yeah. Is the main focus on the back office, or are you even thinking they'll go Linux on the desktop? Is that so funny? 
Pardon? The main focus to get uh, open source into the back office. So the question is there is the main focus to get into the back office or the desktop? Yeah. Um, it's, it's both actually, depending. So, so Bristol, as an example, it's, it's our back end is all through open source and it will be slowly integrated into the desktop. So start back end and go to the front end if possible, but start one way and then progress, progress if possible. <laughs> yes, it is a massive challenge, but I mean, if the likes of Bristol can do it, I don't see any reason why other councils can't do it. Do you find in some of these councils there's one or two advocates and if they leave it just stops, or is it more of a general... No, I think... Do you get one or two key guys in, the, in a certain organisation and they really push it, but if they don't drive it... Yeah, no, you're right. So, but I think the case of like, Bristol's actually pushing forward. They're actually having other events to push forward, and they are the leading council that are doing this, and other councils that are asking about it, which is the reason why we've had a, a Cardiff workshop uh, based on that, and other councils are looking for the exact same kind of, uh, what can we do, how can we do it, please sit us down and tell us. So there is interest out there. Oh dear. Can you just uh, briefly outline what the pitch is to the government? What's the advantage of open source and proprietary? And who, who is the person you're targeting? Like, who's, the person who, you know, who's the person you're finding is the best person to speak to in an organisation to get this stuff to happen? Yeah. Um, who's the best person to talk to? Um, well, from... Well, from what I know is, and I've just started my, my company, um, what we have done is targeted the actual procurement people and talked to them and sit them down because sometimes the IT manager didn't really know what other alternatives there were and if that was the key blockade, then you can't get it in. And if they are anti-open source, then that means it's not going to get into the company, even if the people be above him actually like open source. So you need to target the IT managers in certain cases. Uh, due to contract changes, I'm about to start working for the council, and they're telling us that due to the inability to enforce encryption and things like that on, on Linux laptops, we have to use Windows, and we're not going to be allowed to use Linux. How do you combat that kind of mentality? Uh, how do you combat stupidity? <laughs> I'm not entirely too sure, to be honest. I know that in a case of, so the next two summits that are going to happen in the UK this month is when it's going to come down from government level telling the, senior, the civil servants, which are the people that are going to be responsible for buying and promoting open source within companies, they have to actually look at alternatives so they can't just come up with excuses like that anymore. They actually have to sit up and pay attention. Yeah. Uh, you may want to look at what the European Commission is doing. They've been working a lot to give e-procurement guidelines for open source, and uh, you may want to invite them in that summit because uh, they've been uh, working a lot with SMEs to promote open source. Okay, thank you. One more. Hello, Anthony. These workshops that you're talking about, yes. are they basically for open source consultancy to find out how can we work with government and how that process works and the complex arrangements that the government have in place? Or are they for government to find out how open source works and understand how they can use it? questions about how our workshops actually work. Well, it's the latter, Anthony. Um, they actually work with clients where our company goes in and talks and sits down with the council and see what the kind of the requirements they actually want and how best they can actually be met. Okay. Okay. Yep. What's about the education around the plans for education? With regards to education, um, our company is actually helping organise the senior leader conference on April 5th in the UK, where we're hoping to educate the principals and leaders in the education about open source. So yeah, it, it is going there slowly, but it's a bit harder in those cases. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you.